So I'm Steve Grobman. I'm the CTO for McAfee. We're one of the largest cybersecurity companies focused on both consumer and enterprise security uh, worldwide. Uh, as CTO, I'm focused on leading our technical innovations as well as our threat uh, research team. Quantum computing is quite different in that it's harnessing the primary physics capabilities of uh, quantum mechanics, which has a very unique property where in quantum mechanics, things can be in multiple states simultaneously. And it's this unique property of being in multiple states simultaneously that allows a unique trick of immense parallelism for certain types of computing problems. The risk is with quantum computing that an adversary would be able to access data or impersonate uh, one of these trusted entities uh, and therefore put significant information at, at risk. Uh, this could range anywhere from intellectual property uh, in a corporate environment. Uh, it could be government secrets uh, when you look at uh, national security implications. One of the things that people need to realize is there might be a lag between when data is stolen and when an adversary is going to be able to decrypt it and read it. Uh, so even if the ability to use quantum computing today isn't quite mature enough to be able to break these encryption algorithms, if the encrypted data is available to steal, and the, the essence of the data is such that it's still valuable if it can be decrypted in five or 10 or even 15 years, there are certain types of adversaries that are going to be focused on stealing today's data with the objective of decrypting that a few years down the road. Uh, and what this means is we really need to think about our data along multiple vectors, not only how sensitive data is, but also how long does that data need to be secure for? Uh, some data is very sensitive, but with a very short time horizon for uh, keeping it, it secure. A good example is if you think about financial data for a publicly traded company, that information is very important to keep secret between a quarter end close and a public company's earning announcement but once that earning announcement has occurred, the data is then in the public domain and it, it doesn't really matter if the original data was able to be compromised a few years from now. Contrast that with intellectual property or a trade secret for technology that is critical to a business. In that scenario, if information is stolen and the technology is such that once an adversary knows how to take technology works, that they might be able to build a variant of it and put the company out of business, that's something that would have a long horizon. So uh, making sure that that sensitive trade secret or intellectual property data can be secured for decades is critical. Individuals have lots of different types of data. And some of the data, once it is stolen, there's no way to recover it. So for example, information about an individual's health or health conditions. Uh, you can think about an employer potentially not wanting to hire an individual that has a chronic health condition uh, because of long-term costs or uh, possibly being out, out of the office. So if adversaries are able to steal uh, information like uh, DNA information about individuals or health records about individuals, that information is very difficult to recover and, you know, as we like to say, put the toothpaste back in the tube. So when we think about protecting data, it's important that we don't think about the technology that exists today 
to break today's encryption, but we need to think about the probability that that encryption can be broken a few years down the road. And because all of the signs are pointing to quantum computing becoming mature enough to be able to break encryption within the next five or 10 years, that's why we need to start to act now to retool these encryption systems that are protecting that data and triage those systems to really focus on those that have the longer term security requirements.